today we're going to focus on a injection, specifically the subcutaneous or sub-Q injection route. So looking at our lab manual, the very first thing that we're going to do is confirm our order. So in our chart as well as our MAR, we see that Steve Wade has an order for some insulin, Cumulin N, 80 units, subcutaneous Q day. So that's the one we're going to focus on. Another drug that may be given subcutaneous is heparin, and that one's given in units. So again, depending on which one you draw for, you may have to either give the heparin in units where you might have to do some math calculation, or you may be given the insulin. So you need to be prepared um, to do either one of those depending on which injection you draw. So next thing is obtaining our appropriate supplies. So for a subcutaneous, typically the gauge is 25 to 27, the length is 1 half to 5 eighths inch, and then a maximum dose is less than 1.5 milliliters. So for this instance, we are going to be given insulin. And again, if you're not sure of what drug you're given, again, you need to make sure that you are looking it up in your drug book. Um, preferably in the clinical situation if you do that before you let that instructor know. So if I didn't know um, information about the insulin I was given, I would have to look that up. So next I'm going to grab my medication. So I'm going to be given Humulin N. So again, I have to do my three checks just like I do with any medication. So my first one is when I pull it from the cart. I'm also checking that expiration date. The next thing is gathering other supplies, which is going to include an insulin syringe, because I'm giving insulin, and then my alcohol preps. I'm going to go wash my hands prior to drawing up the medication. Um, number three says perform the dosage calculation correctly. So again, if I was given heparin and doing units, I would have to do a calculation. I'm going to clean my vial with my alcohol prep for about five seconds. Next, any time I draw it from a vial, I have to put in whatever medication I'm going to take out. I have to put in that appropriate amount of air. So this one I'm giving 80 units. So I've got my insulin syringe. I'm going to pull it up to 80 of air. Take off the cap. Inject the air. Then pull out my 80 units of insulin. Again, getting rid of all the air bubbles, making sure that I have the exact dose. So I have my 80 units. I'm going to use the drop method to place the cap back on. Check my medication, again my three times, cumulant in. Sometimes, especially with insulin, it requires another nurse. So again, in a facility, you may be required to get another nurse to help you verify that that's the amount of medication. Um, next, we're going to put in what we call our dead space. And the dead space is to help seal in that medication after we've administered it to the patient. So if we're using an insulin syringe, uh, which is in units, it's going to be 5 units. If we're using a milliliter syringe, we would use 0 0.3 of dead space. So this is a insulin syringe, so we're going to put 80 plus 5, 5 units of dead space, so that makes 85. So again, it's just going to put a little bit of air at the top, so again, when we push that medication, that air bubble will come to the bottom, and when we inject it into the patient, it will seal that medication in. So, ready to give the medication, so I'm going to grab the MAR, the syringe, as well as alcohol preps. Prior to me leaving my workstation, I'm going to make sure that the book is closed for HIPAA purposes. Also make sure that the cart is locked so that other residents cannot or patients cannot get into it. Next, we're going to go into the patient's room, knock on the door, wait for them to answer.
Um, good morning. I'm Miss Shoemaker and I'm here to give you your insulin injection this morning. I'm going to ask them to state their name and birth date. Remember that we never ask them, are you Mr. Wade? Because a confused patient may always answer yes. So we always ask them to state their name and their birth date. While they are doing that, we're checking their armband with the information that's on the MAR. So their name, birth date is correct. So the next thing that I need to do is put on gloves. The medication can be laid down on the table, again, as long as it's within your sight, okay? So I'm going to grab some gloves, and I'm in the room so I can still keep that medication in my sight. Number seven says choose the correct injection site and then clean with alcohol. So at this time when you are doing your checkoffs for your injection, you will be required to let that instructor know the multiple sites where sub-Q injections can be given. So we're given insulin. So we are going to use the abdomen. So again, we're going to use our model to place the injection. So when we're giving it around the abdomen, it's one inch around the belly button. So we're going to clean our site with alcohol. We're going to let that air dry. We do not blow. We do not fan. We let it dry by itself. After that alcohol is dried, we're going to take the cap off our medication. We are going to pinch the skin. Then depending on the size of our patient will determine what angle we use. Um, if we have a patient who is obese, we're going to use a 90 degree angle straight in. But if they are less than obese, we're going to go at a 45 angle. So we're going to pinch up the skin. Our patient is not obese, so we're going to go at a 45 degree angle. Pinch. We're going to puncture the skin, move our hand so that we can stabilize that syringe, then we're going to inject slowly but consistency. Once we've injected the medication, take it out. We are going to massage the medication to get it dispersed. However, if you are administering heparin or Lovenox, you do not massage the site because that can lead to bruising. As soon as we've massaged, we're going to again take our syringe to the sharps. This is a critical element that we discard of the syringe and the sharps. We do not cap used needles. Next, we're going to take off our gloves, wash our hands, and we're going to document the procedure. Since this is a routine medication, the only place that we would need to document would be into the MAR.